Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. This is the best of the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. If you listen to this show, care about this show, you know that we are a marching band to nowhere, a flying saucer of BS. We get behind causes, we careen into a ditch, we succeed very little except for that whole thing about being America's biggest sports radio show. (laughs) So when we get behind causes or do our crusades, it generally doesn't amount to much other than noise, but we now have a pet crusade. You people who think that I don't talk enough sports, this show's not enough about sports. The Vegas Golden Knights are giving you sports. The best stuff that sports can give, the Vegas Golden Knights have it. You have to care about hockey to get really moved by it. But yeah. if you just care about stories, what the Vegas Golden Knights are doing is something that is worth getting behind. And so I want this to become our team, even though we're in South Florida, we don't know anything about ice unless it's in our drinks. Half of them are Florida Panthers anyways. That's we right. could get behind it. But I just as a tribute to the randomness of the sport and the randomness of sport, a team that didn't exist a year ago just swept the Kings. A team that didn't exist a year ago with like players who could skate for them. That team wasn't playing games and now just swept the Kings, a franchise that hockey went to that city in order to matter <laughs> and get bigger. They just, Vegas, ju- we need to get behind everything Vegas because Miami is just Vegas on the, you know, penis peninsula. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. It is, uh, Miami is Vegas. Vegas is Miami, but this Vegas team, 109 points, 109 points in the regular season. So they were good, but it is, it does speak to the randomness of hockey that they can go no. through a regular season, 109 points and sweep the LA Kings. It, so no, it's our no, team. No, and wait it's a now minute. America's wait, team. Wait a minute. It's not the randomness of hockey. This team is good and being rewarded for being good. This is not the randomness of hockey. This is the randomness of sports that sometimes people don't know what they're doing with player evaluation and they send guys away that are valuable. And sometimes I don't think the Vegas Golden Knights are smarter than everyone in the history of the sport. No, probably not. I I think they put together a good team because much of player acquiring is happenstance. And sometimes all of that happenstance comes to be something great. But it doesn't make any sense that the Vegas Gold... They are in the middle of the best expansion season we've ever seen from a sports team of any kind. <laughs> Their first season has been better, I think, than just about any Panther season they've ever but, had. But they, you can make the <laughs> argument, what... And I am not any kind of hockey expert, okay? I'm not pretending to be one. I've told you the story before. Cubans don't do hockey. My father went to a Panthers game. There were a lot of goals being scored. They were throwing rats at uh, on the ice because... Scott Mellenby had killed a rat in the locker room with a stick, and it became a thing. And then Tom Barrasso, the goalie for the Penguins, is hiding in the in the net, afraid because rats are raining down, and they change down the rules. And in that stand, in those stands, my father, who did not know the color of a blue line before that game, my father, who thought the puck was made of metal, <laughs> my father was crying. My father was crying when that hockey siren went off and rats rained down on Tom Barrasso. And he had to hide in the net because they were beating Lemieux and Lindros. I wish the pucks were made of metal. (laughs) That's the way to use him. The way to use him is in short bursts. Death metal hockey guy. He was exhausted after. Yes. Yes. And and he didn't think it was funny. Quite the core workout. Yes. Uh, Definitely not funny. But that was my father. That's the thing, though, right? My father, that is one of the places where my father came to love sports in this country is because a story could move you. A story could, in sports, even though you don't know what the hell is going on because he didn't know what he was watching. Right. How can we not get behind these Vegas Golden Knights? And, Mike, how do we, should we, I'm liking that we might repurpose our University of Central Florida National Champion Trophy. I want to get behind the Vegas Knights in the biggest and best ways that this could be done. And we'll probably ruin it as soon as we arrive. They'll probably lose the next four games. Yeah, they didn't really need our help. 
Well, I want to get behind it, though. I, I want to do it publicly, loudly. I want people paying attention uh, to this to this hockey team. Well, I, I want to learn their stories. We will learn their stories. I will uh, a couple recommendations. This may be outside of the box. Let me go. I'm just spitballing, though. Let's not judge. What if we open the radio show talking Vegas Golden Knights hockey? I think oh, that's, that's a bad that. idea. And oh. what if no, what if we get jerseys for you and Sugats, Ooh, and we hacky. dress up the studio a little bit? Hacky. Hacks. How about they send us helmets that fit? How about some creative ideas? Did they get him a baby helmet? Is that a baby helmet that Stugatz is wearing right now? Is that a kid's helmet or is his is his head misshapen? He's turning red from how tight hurts, these things man. are on his ears. No joke. It looks like one of your eyes might pop Stugatz, out. Stugatz, please take that off immediately. Okay. You look unhealthy. Your face looks a radioactive kind of red. I can't take it off. I mean, it's so tight. Mike bolted it into his temples for the comedian. For the- <laughs> I can't get it off. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, there's a strap. There is a strap on his. I'm, I'm not sure if that's something that actually just happened. I think that just happened for real. Stugatz was trying to take a helmet off. He couldn't get it off by pulling it over his head, and then he realized there was a strap under his chin. I can't undo the strap. Don Lebatard. Yanni Adababubu. Stugatz. Giannis Adababumbo. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. We urge you, if you don't even care that much about hockey, the hockey playoffs are tremendous. There is not a lot in sports better than the hockey playoffs. And if you care about sports usually the hockey playoffs can get your interest if you just care about sports because of what it can do. And the Vegas Golden Knights are doing something right now that is worth getting behind. But we are obligated by contractual demand by ESPN to talk about a dynasty possibly dwindling. It just said on first take in a graphic I saw, dynasty dwindling, and the report is Tom Brady has not committed to play next year. Whoa. That's right. So everything must stop. I'm sorry, Vegas Golden Knights feel good. we got to stop for a second, and we've got to analyze what the hell's going on here. (laughs) Mike, what the hell's going on here? This is the kind of investigation I do in 2018. I say, Mike, (laughs) what the hell's going on here? (laughs) Clear as day. What's going on here? What? Mind games. This is Tom Brady messing with Bill Belichick, causing an off-season distraction that he never has to deal with. This is payback for getting his guy out of there. Wow. And part of getting the guy out of there, by the way, is Belichick, you know, if he has Garoppolo there, he says, hey, Tommy, you don't want to show up? That's fine. I'll go with Garoppolo. Hey, get out of here. Don't show up. Don't show up this season. Oh, I'll go forward with Garoppolo. I'm not going so to Tommy got him out of there. I'm not going to OTAs. I'm not going to I'm not going to voluntary camps. I'm not being dutiful soldier anymore. I got Oh, you don't like my doctor who's not a doctor. I'm going to hang out with my doctor who's not a doctor and we're going to whisper in Gronk's ear and you know all he's doing is motorboating and waiting for a distraction. He's just somewhere in the off season limping through the off season motorboating. Me and my doctor who's not a doctor is going to get in Gronk's ear and say, "Hey, you train with us, not with Belichick." And Gronk's going to start talking publicly about what I don't want to play so much anymore. Yeah, and Danny, why don't you be single and happy in Miami now all of a sudden? I'm telling you, man. This is payback. This is the busiest couple of weeks of the offseason for the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick's trying to prepare for a draft, and now Tom Brady's putting it in the back of his head, you may not have a quarterback next season. Who are you going to take? I love that, man. Because <laughs> when you ask yourself, what is, you know, what the hell, what the hell is Tom Brady doing? Well, other than having sex with a supermodel, and other than trying to decide every day what's more super, the bowl or the model. He's just winning everywhere. And Belichick's preparing for the draft. <laughs> and the crafts have come out and publicly said Tom Brady will end as he pleases. We're not stupid. I know that they came out and put out a statement, a unified statement after the Wickersham thing broke. But things are happening around this organization that never used to happen. Yeah, we're reading into it because typically there was never anything to read into. So it's just adding fuel. It's not making this go well, away. This, the part that's confusing to me, because we've talked before with people who know a lot more than we do. Michael Holly is the guy who's reported on this uh, 
dwindling dynasty, and he can tell you the stories about how Tom Brady has been subservient. Tom Brady is a follower. Tom Brady has very much bowed to the whims of his boss, Bill Belichick, who is somebody who can be caught snorting, laughing some days, listening to old 1990s jerky boys pranks, prank calls, snorting at his computer. And now the power in that organization, it appears that Tom Brady, by making Facebook videos with Deepak Chopra's kid and with doing the late night circuit and with doing things like this, it appears that Tom Brady has realized, oh, you ain't the boss of me anymore, Belichick. Uh, 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 uh. LeBron does not work for Ty Lu. I do not work for you. Do people find their voice at 40? Right. We talk about LeBron is finding his voice when he's 26. Well, this is crazy. But, no, but Brady has been such a lopsided robot about football that he didn't realize he was an adult until right now. Like, he's been the subservient guy who's been a follower, even as one of sports' great leaders. He follows Belichick. Michael Holly has explained all that to us, and he's not doing it anymore. But do you think there was a moment, like a moment, like someone had to sit him down? Did he come to this realization? I'm guessing by it had to do with Garoppolo, and it's a slow drip over time. Hey, I wanted Wes Welker to stay here. Why'd you send him away? No, but I'm talking about like that. Someone have to sit Tom Brady down and say, "Hey, he's not your boss. You're his boss." You're the reason he's won all these Super well, Bowls, once, not the other well, way around. Once you have the relationship with the owner that allows the owner to neuter the coach who doesn't want to trade the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, the supermodel who was coming for Tom Brady's stuff that we now know to all be good. All of us know he is a good quarterback who, as of recently, was given the highest contract in the history of the sport at the position. They traded that away. Young, I, I mean... Trading that away is moronic. It's moronic. Especially the way they went about it, which is they could have called Cleveland. Cleveland would have gave more. They just, Belichick just wanted Garoppolo to go to a good place. That's right. A good place where he could succeed. Correct. But that, but so these, all these Patriots, listen to this though. Imagine that. All these Patriots who now seem to be in a bit of revolt over the Belichick way, like all this stuff has been oppressive and we are happy to be outside of it. I, Belichick will bench Butler during the Super Bowl. He doesn't care about anything, uh, any humanity. But he cares enough after he's been neutered by Brady and Kraft that he has to trade his quarterback, that he wants to make sure to trade him to a place where that quarterback will succeed, even if it means bringing back the franchise not equal value that makes the country laugh and think you're an idiot. <laughs> it's odd. Man. Right? Yes. What? How does all of that fit together? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But I think Belichick has the ultimate payback here because you've noticed they have no offensive line. <laughs> you're right. I mean, you know, right? You're right. You're so right. You're, uh, you're so right. He's going to just keep. He's going to keep. Wait, oh, really, Tom? No, you, know, look, no, you know what? This is, you got it. Watch this. This is, Stugatz has got it. I, he's he's. Look, you guys thought Belichick and the Patriots were a genius dynasty. Stugatz <laughs> has just revealed how this will end at its pettiest and with the most ego. And the way that will happen is Belichick who has shown off for years because he puts a stand-up comic at quarter at, at running back and the guy scores four touchdowns in a game and he's put on the cover of Sports Illustrated and then he's out of the league because Belichick could do that. His <laughs> ego is such that he says, no, 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 you thought that was good? Watch this. Watch this. I know I can do some of this stuff with running backs, but watch this. I'm going to do it with white wide receivers. Yeah, look at it. Eat it. White wide receivers, and now the next move is those tiny people are going to be his offensive linemen. Belichick is going to say, "I could do it with Amendola as my left as my left tackle." They're both actively trying to make the team worse. That's right. That is correct. And it's just going to be Bob. Kraft what a at the great end. ending! Finally, somebody <laughs> other than them wins. Like finally, they are. They are both trying to make the team worse, and this poor Bob Kraft. <laughs> it still won't be the Jets that win the. That's right. That's true. That's well, they're still in the division. Bob Kraft at quarterback will win ten games for the Patriots in the AFC East. Money, 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 money. Uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Would uh, would Bob Kraft be the third healthiest quarterback in the uh, AFC East? Third best and healthiest. Wait a now, I mean, Tom Brady. Who's the Patriots quarterback right now? Who is it if Brady's not committing to anything? Well, Brissett is gone. Is it uh, 
I can't, is it Hoyer? Hoyer. Yeah, it's Hoyer. Okay, he's not better than Hoyer. You sure? I'm not sure, actually. Don Lebertard. I'm pulled over, and I'm there with the police officer, and the police officer's outside my window, and a guy drops by in the opposite lane here, okay? Yeah. Stugatz. He yells. <laughs> what are you? Why are you laughing already? I haven't even gotten to the good part of the story. Just the visual. and I know No, it gets good. better. It gets better. The guy's <laughs> driving by, and he goes, appreciate you, man. And he's hanging out of the car. And so I'm getting the ticket. And I'm waving at him. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. And then he yells back at me. I was talking to the police officer. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebatard show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Zach Lowe going to join us in just a minute on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. His podcast. The Low Post is available on the ESPN app and Apple Podcast. Here's your Sports Center update. Shohei Otani developed a blister and lasted only two innings versus the Red Sox. Bust. Yankee manager Aaron Boone is thinking about dropping Giancarlo Stanton lower in the batting order. And finally, Kendrick Lamar was awarded the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for his studio album Damn. It's the first non-classical or non-jazz piece to ever win the award. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Do me a favor here, please, because the shipping container, sometimes they forget they're at work and nobody was listening there. Can you read that second story again? Yeah. yeah just read the second story there that you had uh, in your Sports Center. Yeah, and I'll remind you guys again. Before I read this, we're about 12 games into the season. Yankee manager Aaron Boone is thinking about dropping Giancarlo Stanton lower in the batting order. (laughs) (laughs) Genuine laughter. (laughs) Genuine laugh. (laughs) Genuine. (laughs) Genuine laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Lower. (laughs) Wait, the nine spot? (laughs) <laughs> Is there a tenth spot available? <laughs> Genuine laugh. Good joke. I saw you did that. Hey, happy at his failures. Hey. <laughs> so Zach Lowe joins us now. A guy writes in here, or maybe it's a woman. The notion that a bit player like Brady thinks he's responsible for Belichick's success is laughable. Belichick won eleven games with Matt Castle. And that is the sports fan absolutism you love. Only one of them can have the credit for each other's success. We're laughing at the fact that both of them don't seem to realize that they're responsible at the end for each of their success. And now they seem to be fighting over it and wrecking the team. I don't care who you think is more responsible for the success of Brady or Belichick. I'm just enjoying that they seem to be fighting over who gets the credit now. Zach Lowe with us, and as we said, the Low Post is available on the ESPN app and Apple Podcast. We all know how great Anthony Davis is, but I do not understand, Zach, and thank you for joining us, Why? how it is that the Portland backcourt is being outplayed at home. I mean, some of it is Anthony Davis, right? I mean, the dude is absolutely everywhere. You put him in the pick and roll, he's a menace. Last night, he guards Al Farouk Amino, except he doesn't even guard him. He just sort of posts up in the paint and swats at everything. And then through Holiday, it, people are starting to realize how good this dude is. And, and if you put him on Damian Lillard for 70 possessions a game or whatever it is, Damian Lillard's life is not going to be very fun. Zach, if, if DeMarcus Cousins is healthy, would this team be a threat to Houston or Golden State? Well, I think that's actually the most fascinating question is, what, you know, let's, let, if they go on to win this series, which is not a done deal, you know, I don't know how much we can trust them given their track record, but, you know, what do you, what do you do with DeMarcus Cousins? You've played very well with a spacing power forward in Miritich and his spot and Davis playing entirely at center now, basically like, what is that, like, how much better would they be if you took Miritich out and put Cousins in? I mean, how much better were they really? Were they any better at all? I think that's the most fascinating question they face as an organization. If, if this continues to go well for them. Help me understand something here. Zach Lowe, his podcast, The Low Post, is available on the ESPN app and Apple Podcasts. And you are telling us that we are now growing to learn how good, uh, was it Drew Holiday is yes. on defense? And what I wanted to ask you is, I didn't think there was any such thing as guarding Damian Lillard well. 
I didn't think that there is a guy out there, really, outside of maybe LeBron if he has to do it all game in his prime. But is there such a thing as a guy that guards Lillard well? Yeah, I think that's been one of the one of the great myths of NBA basketball over the last five or six years as all these point guards have come up and started jacking threes from Curry ranges. This idea that, well, point guard defense is impossible. It doesn't matter. The only defenders who matter are wings and big men. And I just don't – I never thought that was true. I don't think it's true. And, and look – it's hard to guard Damian Lillard when someone sets a screen for him. But if you can make it 10% harder for him, if you're six inches closer than the average point guard defender would be and your arms are three inches longer, all of that stuff adds up to like little percentage point wins here or there. And Drew Holiday is big and tough and smart. And yeah, he can, he can, he's one of the few guys who maybe can do it. Zach, I know you wrote about Game 1, the Cavs series. Game 2 is tonight, and for me, it's a must-win for the Cavaliers. But uh, I know you wrote about it for ESPN.com. What did you see? What concerned you the most about what you saw out of the Cavaliers in Game 1? It was just such a blah game. Just blah. Like, Jeff Green was, was terrible, and they're not guarding him. They're treating him like the Pelicans are treating Aminu. Just put a center on him and have the center roll all over the floor. And this is sort of the conundrum with LeBron, right? I mean, he gets in these playoff series, and look, Bogdanovich played a really nice game on him, and he's an underrated defender. You cannot tell me that that dude has a chance if LeBron just says, hey, I'm going to post up 12 feet from the rim, give me the damn ball every single time, and we're going to get a three or a layup or a dunk. And he just doesn't do that until their backs are against the wall. And if he agrees with you and thinks their backs are against the wall tonight, like, I want to see LeBron go into, you know, LeBron finals mode. Let's see it because they can't guard him down there. All right, Zach, but what the hell, man? 18 at home, losing by 18 at home and scoring 80 to open the playoffs. Like, what the hell with that Cavs team, Zach? That's the question. Zach, the question question is what the hell? That's the question is what the hell, Zach? I agree with you. I just thought it was like it, they played it like it was game 83. There was no urgency. Now they did miss. They were 8 of 34 from 3. And you want to hang your hat on, well, that will change. Well, if they hit their average from 3, they still lose the game to a fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. And their rotations are all a mess. Kyle Culver played four minutes. They don't know if they should start Lance or Larry Nance or not start Larry Nance. It was just sort of like the verve, the sp- one team played really, really hard and really, really urgently, and the other team just kind of played an NBA basketball game like it was February. I'd be interested to get your thoughts on this, because for me, this is the infuriating thing about LeBron James. I heard Stephen A. Smith say this the other day, and I happen to agree uh, with what he said, where with LeBron, you can't count out that maybe LeBron doesn't want to get to the finals because he doesn't want a six finals loss on his resume. Therefore, he'd rather just bow out now and go figure out where he's going to go next. That infuriates me because you want him to be a competitor and not think that way, but I happen to think, Zach, that he does think that way. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. What I I would buy is maybe this, and and you guys have seen this before up close in Miami. We all did, and people in Cleveland will say they've seen it before. If, If he doesn't think they can win, if he doesn't think this is a great team, and he's staring at free agency, it would be human nature for him to to maybe have 2% of his head not where it was when he was locked 2%. in. 2%? Wait a minute, could... wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Guys, guys. Why, he was getting some Guys, good, no, he wasn't. No, 2%. No, 3%, Zach. Zach, make it 3%. Well, I'm not going to cycle. Zach, I'm not going to cycle. Make, you already did. did. I'm not you, gonna, you said maybe you know, 2%. I'm not going to do that. You said maybe 2%. Now, I seems think we can push like 4%. it. It seems like it might be closer to 4%, <laughs> Zach. Say it, put your name on it. Let's see if we can put it on the ESPN scroll. Uh, look, let's see what happens in game two. But this did not look like the engaged supernova LeBron that we've seen. And if he would look at the, this Cavs season has been crazy and melodramatic, and they just have never really Zach. hit a year of greatness other than that 18 game, you know, that 18 game run against almost all bad teams in November and December. You are a responsible, nuanced journalist. The low, po- uh, the low post, I'm telling you, I've told you this before. You go listen to Zach Lowe and you will get information the way nobody else in journalism is doing it, where it's film study, it is talking to scouts, it is being plugged in, it is being reasonable and being nuanced. Now, all of that said, though, Zach, you will predict what will happen with this Cavs team. No more of this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that. (laughs) You're going to tell me whether they're getting out of the first round or not, and you're going to put your name on it. 
Oh, I, have, I I already predicted they would get out of the first round, and I've already predicted that I think LeBron is more likely to leave than he is to stay. I don't know what else you want me to say, but I, I think they're going to beat Indiana. I picked them to win in five. I wouldn't even deviate from that pick at this point. They're better, and they will play better. What happens beyond here is a little bit more of a mystery, but I predicted before the season LeBron will leave. If you had to put a gun to my head and, and say, where is he going to be next year? I don't know, but I wouldn't guess Cleveland if I had to guess. Wow, that's my favorite game, man. I have him, just so you know, Zach, gun to my head. I have him with Kawhi Leonard down in Miami. How about oh, that? what about, How about that? that? Go, yeah. A gun to your head, Zach. Uh, Kawhi is in San Antonio next season. Uh, I would say, again, given those parameters that you just said, those violent parameters, I would say no. I mean, <laughs> the smoke here, this is beyond smoke at this point. I guess it might be just fire now. It might be straight up fire. The barbs that are going back and forth, he's not with the team. I don't know what other conclusion you're supposed to draw. And you see these reports trickle out like, oh, the Spurs are deflecting trade calls. The Spurs are posturing that they won't trade Kawhi. Of course they are. What are they going to do, Sur- surrender and throw their hands up in the air? It's the playoffs. They're not going to do that. But, yeah, if you had to bet, I mean, I think that's the best bet to make. All right, solid game of gun to your head, man. And no. you brought it up, by the way. I've got another I got oh, okay. another round. Okay, all right. Gun to your head. Warriors, so, ro- Warriors Rockets. Ooh. Uh, what are we – what's the Steph Curry assumption? Uh, that there's a gun to your head. Okay, well, is he holding it, or is it just a random it's person right holding now. a gun? It's right now. Right now, Curry. It's war- war- Warriors still. Warriors still. I've said Warriors all year. I think if, if Curry's at 85 90%, I'd take Warriors. If he's not in the series or if he's limping around and he's at 50%, I would probably take Rockets. What if he's 65%, are- Zach? What if he's 65%? Rockets, probably. <laughs> probably. That's right. that, listen. That's not listen, a gun to your head. I'm works. an expert at gun to your head, man. You just got to give. Like you just got to let it <laughs> no fly, problem. man. And then, and then hope you're right, and hope that you're still alive after the series. <laughs> no you know? probably. The podcast, the low post, available on the ESPN app and Apple Podcast. Seriously, despite our nonsense, what I'm telling you is, you're not getting this kind of basketball coverage anywhere. If you like basketball, thank you, Zach. Thanks, guys. Cash more of the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. I'm a one-trick pony, literally. I show up at kids' parties and act cute. That's pretty much it. So excuse me for being bitter when Geico says not only could we save you money on car insurance, but we do more, like give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or even via our award-winning mobile app. Well, ooh la la, aren't they multi-talented? <laughs> Hey, I said organic carrots. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebatard. Bill Belichick has told his players that despite the blizzard that's expected in the New England area, the Patriots will hold its final practices during its playoff bye week. No excuses for being late. Moron. Stugatz. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Don't I mean, that. no Don't excuses for being Damn. late. I'm sorry. If he needs it, it you got to give it to him. He's helping Bill. He is displaying behavior, that of a moron. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> save it. We're good. <laughs> you kick save it. You. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We're in trouble, man. What happened? I keep texting uh, Zach Lowe, hey, and no response. Allison, can you call Zach Lowe so we can apologize to him on air and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, calling is very aggressive at this yeah, point. You got to give him time to respond to hey. Yeah. Has he, do you see any of the three dots? Let me check again. No, no. Yeah, we don't want to come off desperate now. Yeah. All, All right. right. Sorry. Hey. 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 So three hey's and a sorry and not even a dot. I mean, Ooh, nothing. Three that's haze. too many. Th- yeah, Being that's too, too many. I need to back off. Yeah. Too, too okay. many haze. How many straight texts with, without him responding? Um, Four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stalker. You guys don't think Allison should just handle Zach Lowe? I'd like to talk to Zach Lowe so we can apologize to him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, we can't just call him, guys. We need to be on the same page about this. Yeah. Because now we know how this game goes. Right. One more hey? Or? He has all the power. I'm not sure you know how the game goes, Dan. I've been out of the game for a long time. Okay, well, you're losing it right now. Okay, you're sorry. losing it. I'm game. Mike in Swingers. Yeah, yeah. It's a power struggle. Mike's right. There's any a power struggle? Any dots? Do you see dots? No dots. Wait, what color is text messages? His are uh, white. 
Oh, in yours? Green. Oh, yeah, you're not going to see dots. Uh, oh, this is bad. By the way, you hate the uh, the people who text. Like, do me a favor. When you text me, text me your entire thought in one text. I don't need a series of texts. It's obnoxious and it's annoying. You know people who do that? Give me the entire thought in one text. Don't give me 15 text messages all around a single thought. Allison does it all the time. All the time. Thank yep. God you brought it up. She is the worst. She had a, a day that she sent me 30 straight texts that I did not answer, and it was like four sentences. She does like one word at a time sometimes, and if she wants to be really aggressive, she'll do one letter at a time if you haven't answered. What? So it'll be like 18 straight letters for four words, and it's like, can you not tell that I'm busy or I don't want to talk to you right now? Does it sound like that's intentional to do one at a time? <laughs> it is intentional to annoy him, and yes, I do it all the time. Well, get the He's point. The no one wants to talk no, to you. But you're the person that like takes days to respond, and then when you text, you're like, w- like, why aren't you responding? Why aren't you getting back to me? Well, because so I only text you important things. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's annoying, Allison. I'm just telling. Oh, bubbles are coming back. I see some bubbles. How? Are you, no, there's no bubbles, bubbles if he's green. You're lying. Text. Oh, that was Baselli. <laughs> ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Small business protection just got easier. With more than 30 coverage options available, Progressive has you covered. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. The NBA playoffs are on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight as LeBron and the Cavs host the Pacers. Coverage begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Here's your Sports Center update. Tallahassee police had conducted surveillance on Florida State quarterback DeAndre Francois for months on a tip that he's been selling marijuana and has raided his apartment, finding less than an ounce of the drug. University of Michigan police are investigating threatening tweets directed towards Jim Harbaugh. And finally, Sioux Falls mayoral candidate Jolene Lochter says she is 100% committed to and supports Stugat's Day in Sioux Falls. That's the platform she's running on? Run on this platform. Get me a private jet. She says she loves Stugat's. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> now I feel bad. Yeah, you, oh, got, man, you, you were asking bad. for a private jet before you... Uh, oh, yeah. I still want it. She says that she loves Stugat's and would like Poppy to make the trip as well. More on this story as it develops. Or not. Hey, uh, Poppy, hey, a little pushy there, right? Poppy will go in there and take your appearance fee, and he won't ask for no private jet. He's got first-class travel in his contract. That was funny. He made fun of my agent about it. He's like, really, first, first-class first travel? That's what you got us? Hey, really? That's what you got us? Yeah. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm an old man who lives three blocks from my house. That's what you got us, first-class travel. Well, who's his agent? For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I do it with Poppy. I think that'd be fun. Uh, Poppy, she's offered Poppy a week, hasn't she? Hasn't she offered my father an entire week? Still got today, but my father a week. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how to burn a day there. How are you going to do a week there? Sioux Falls. I mean, jeez. This is not very nice, <laughs> Stugat. These people are trying to do a day for you. The mayoral candidate wants to get you out there. Now, the the mayor just- is using me to get elected. That's what the mayor is doing. She's running on the Stugat's platform of, hey, Sioux Falls, Stugat's Day. She's using me for votes. And you know what? If you're going to use me for votes, that's fine, okay? I'm going to use you to get it exactly how I want. And how I want it is a lot more money, more things to do, and a private jet. By the way, you can listen to us on Sioux Falls Sports Leader, <laughs> ESPN 991. Love you guys. And I love Sioux Falls. I want to make this happen. Summer, preferably. No, no, you want to make this happen. We've got to play a little golf, can, little golf you tournament. You cannot do burn a day. I want to make this happen. I love Sioux Falls. I've got to call the Kentucky Fraud Chickens out on you on that. You can't do that. I love Sioux Falls. I'm doing everything I can to get out of ever visiting Lu- Sioux Falls. Yo, chicken time. <laughs> Listen to us in Sioux Falls Sports Leader, ESPN 99.1. I'm serious, man. I'd be happy to go out there summer months. You're not serious? Okay, thank you. Uh, the chickens are undefeated. They are the Harlem yeah. Globetrotters. Never, never lost. Never, never lost. Yeah. You're right, you're right, chicken. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, well, all right, so we're beefing with Zach Lowe as part of our continued quest to beef with everyone in the mainstream media. Chicken thighs. We? We? You? We? Yes, okay, my bad. All right, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chickens. Get back in there. You're right, as always. Undefeated. Yes, I'm sorry. Whoa! Sorry to upset you. I'm beefing with Zach Lowe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so God says the better beefs. It's Will Bond. It's Dan Patrick. It's Rich Eisen. It's around the horn. It's an entire city. Yeah. It's, I it's, love that city. Listen, I'm open to doing this in the summer. I mean, so much. I mean, Stu Gatz is so much better at beefing than I am. I'm beefing with Zach Lowe. Uh, I mean, listen, no city means more to me than Sioux Falls. No affiliate, no city, nobody. I know Miami means everything to you. Sioux Falls means everything to me for the right price. I can be bought. You love that affiliate. <laughs> I do love that. He affiliate. talks about it every day. What is I do. What is that affiliate again? So you know. Oh man, the sports leader. <laughs> Number one in my heart. Yeah. Home of the Sky Force. Ninety-seven point two. No. Mm. You really should have. Go- I mean, honestly, why couldn't you go with the bluffery? Why did you go and give the wrong call letters now in Sioux Falls? <laughs> call numbers. That's a fine. <laughs> You're Flemmy. That's a fine on you. I got a cold, man. Chest cold. Terrible one. What does that have to do with anything? I'm supposed to be Flemmy. I mean. What? 98.6. No. 98% of LeBron is not tanking. 102.4. Yeah. The sports leader. Ninety nine point one, Sioux Falls. Yeah! Sports leader. yeah, yeah. I'll go there, man. Boom. Wait, if they give you a private chat. Well, I mean, listen. Uh, you know, this mayor. She's not the mayor, Dan. So I know what's happening here. The current mayor wants Sioux Falls Day, and the mayor who is running against the current mayor sees the popularity out there. So I feel like, a, you know what? I was just wait, waiting around for my spot because now I'm at max leverage point. This is fantastic. This is great. Hey, right? Yes. You're a debate topic. Yes. My patience you, is paid off. Yes. I mean, so you need to be a part. Uh, no, now, and now what we need to do. <laughs> it's patience. No, no, so, yeah, it's no, precisely no. what it's been. Mike, we need to do this. Yes, patience. A shining tribute, not to Stugatz's just unending greed, but to his patience as a symbol of his strength. We need to have him go and moderate a debate between the mayors of Sioux Falls. That's is, something that needs to be. It's going to cost more. But this is also what I'm saying, okay? I am willing, whichever mayor is willing, because they're both running, that wants to pay me the most money for a Sioux Falls day, okay? That's the mayor I will back at Sioux Falls. And if I back you, you're going to win. So, you know what? Let the bidding begin. Okay, now we're in the game. Now, let's do it with corrupt and politics. all of us. I want yes. all of us there. Oh, well, that's the lie. That's the lie. Don't. You don't want anything. What if we cut into your appearance? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What if we... No, 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 no. <laughs> I just want to share the joyous day with you guys. Key to the city, you know, a golf tournament. Carry my oh, golf share... bags. Yeah, yeah, carry my bags. Is. is that it? You uh, just... Buy lunch. You don't want to go there by yourself. <laughs> I'll, buy... <laughs> I'll buy lunch. I love the idea of Stu God's flying to all his dreams in a private jet and sobbing because he's so alone. <laughs> <laughs> you think they have golf in Sioux Falls? I'm serious. Of course they have golf. Put it on the poll. Wait, what? I don't, I don't know if they have golf there. Listen, I'm telling you. What do you? They have golf everywhere. What do you mean? Everywhere in the United States where you will find a large region. It's debatable. South Dakota. I mean, I don't know. I don't... A large non-urban region. Wait a minute. Maybe, maybe Stugatz is right about this. Of course there's golf in Sioux Falls. I, I, I'm going to Google golf courses in Sioux Falls. Hold on, hold on. I don't know the demographics of Sioux Falls. I don't know the temperature of Sioux Falls. So it's S-U-E, Falls? Cent, five cent, ten cent, dollar. Population, 35% elk. I mean, we're not going there. Dangerous. You ever see an elk? Horns, I think. That's a great question on the poll at Levitard Show. Have you ever seen an elk? Not a picture of an elk, an elk. Have you ever seen an elk? It's how much elk? 35%. That can't be right. That can't, you cannot tell me. That's a, that statistic does not, 
What do you mean Sioux Falls is 35% elk? 35% of the residents are elk. That can't I mean, be right. I we're going to have this golf tournament. An elk are going to be my foursome. I mean, an elk is going to hand me a key to the city. I mean, an elk's running for mayor. No, what? With Vivid Seats, you can get tickets to watch your favorite team, no matter what your favorite team or where your favorite team plays. Talk to them about it, Stugatz. Tell them. Yep, spring has arrived. That means so is Major League Baseball season. The crack of the bat, the smell of the grass. It's time to head to the stadium and experience all the action. What's the best way to get tickets to the ballpark? With Vivid Seats. Just download the free Vivid Seats app and easily find seats wherever your favorite sports team is playing. I have found approximately 25 golf courses. Oh, really? About 25 golf courses. Okay. I believe one of them has elk in the name. <laughs> All right, we're back in business. I mean, I'll go out there. You guys want to go? A little golf tournament? Check out the elk. I mean, you guys pay for your own travel. And I'll meet you with Poppy. Chris, you in? Good. Summer, you in? Roy? Sioux Falls? Billy? Sioux Falls? Yeah, sure. You don't think it's going to happen, It's not. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> well, it's not. Don Lebertard. Yo! Chicken time! Stugats! Smarter gob! This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. As you see what's happening, Stugats, in San Antonio... And in New England. Is it possible for these kinds of things to end well very often? I know the Spurs had that great 20-year run, but is Popovich allowed to retire regally, or does the way it has to end always be with everything coming apart, that Belichick and Brady have to fall apart at the end, that Tim Duncan and Popovich got to the end, but now Popovich is there, he comes from another time, he's not connecting with Kawhi Leonard Kawhi Leonard doesn't trust him. They've got a massive scandal on their hands right. because this is a young superstar. And for whatever the reasons are, Popovich can't reach him. They Well, the reason is LeBron. I've told you that. So well, when LeBron gets in the mix, then no, it's impossible for it to end correctly. No, but what yeah. I'm asking you is with what is happening in New England, the odds are always against that ending. Given that Tom Brady and Bill Belichick might have different ideas about how good Tom Brady's going to be at the end. Tom right. Brady isn't going to find in the mirror, I can't do this. Confidence is the last thing to go. Mirror's the last thing to know. So it can't end well. Like, it, at, unless Tom Brady decides to retire, it's not just going to end at 45 with them holding up a trophy and then it's done. There's always a greed at the end of it. These people well, define could, themselves by these things too much for them to, to, to just let them go. Well, hold on. Then. Could it end that way? Could it end? Belichick, Brady, Super Bowl, Brady's done? Where Belichick's done. At the same time, it doesn't feel like that's where we're headed when Kraft's publicly saying Tom Brady can retire however he wants. No, but okay. Maybe not the perfect ending, but if they win a Super Bowl, one of them just decides to hang it up. Isn't that a pretty good ending right there? Yes, but Tom Brady keeps saying on Facebook that he's playing till 50. And his wife, a supermodel, she's pretty persuasive, and she's the breadwinner in the family. She's like, retire already. And he's like, no. She's like, come on, we don't need money. She's, He's like, no. Right. I'm trying to think. Look of, at Gronk. He can't even speak anymore. No. You killed Wes Welker. No. Come home. I want you to be safe. No. I'm trying to think where it's ended perfectly. Like, I'm trying to think. I of, mean, Tim Duncan, they ended that pretty perfectly. I, well, it, they ended that perfectly. But the reason it was so perfect for so long for Pop is they kind of lucked into, you know, Robinson got hurt. So he transitioned from David Robinson to Tim Duncan, which kept them relevant and winning championships for another two decades. Then you thought he was going to transition to Kawhi, and that's not working out um, because of LeBron. But... So this is not going to end well for Popovich. Well, it's not going to end the way I think Popovich envisioned it to end with him on top. It's not. Like, they're not going to be on top for very long. They're, they're already done. But what I'm saying, didn't it happen with Pat Riley here in Miami? He came down from the heavens one last time, won it miraculously in 2006. Did he quit? Did he immediately quit? That's never how it ends. When does the co- – to- Tony Dungy walked away, but not the moment he won it. Yeah, Elway. Worked for Elway. Well, no, but it worked for Elway because he was a million years old. 
Like at that point, Elway's body, the way he played helicoptering around, breaking at every turn. Like at that point, Elway, yes, you're right. It did. He got the ending right. With the team he started with, Mm -hmm. he ended with that team. But you look back, greatest athletes. Jordan didn't end with that same team. Montana didn't get that ending. But do the coaches get that ending? Do, do the coaches ever retire? At the, I, I always feel like there's some extra greed that you're not allowed to. In sports, you're not really allowed to retire the hero with the story on the perfect ending the way you want it. If you could or would, Dwayne Wade would retire right now, today. Right after that game. That'd be the perfect way to but retire. But no, that's not how anybody retires, though. I like, mean, Jordan had it perfect. Yes, he did. He got yes, greedy he did. And came back. No, but they all do. Had it perfect. They all do. Yes, Jordan <laughs> had it. Oh, but why do you think his last speech was so bitter? <laughs> like the last speech of the Hall of Fame, he's spitting at everybody. Why? Because all the years after that were so awful. <laughs> Seriously. Like he's been. He's and he co- just needed to get it off jo- his chest. Jordan's I mean, a, yeah, but Jordan's a meme and a clown show now. He had the perfect ending. You think we could put that meme on his face if he had just quit right after that? Dick Vermeil had a perfect ending. He walked away from the sport after he won the Super Bowl, right? And that's a guy you would who appears to have balance in his life, right? Did he? And he couldn't stay away. Oh, uh, but he he yes, he wept. He wept when he won the Super Bowl, and then he, he went came out back. on top. But this one is different. When you have two guys attached to it, greatest coach, greatest quarterback. I think Dan, it's an interesting point. Can this end well? Right? You have greatest quarterback. Greatest coach. So these two were tied together, and everyone's trying to, it seems like Tom is tired of Belichick, and everyone's trying to figure out who deserves the most amount of credit while they're wrecking the team together. And that's what they're doing. And they should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, there Seriously. Vermeil couldn't say away. Bill Walsh did, though, right? After they won a championship? Or did he return to college? But he stayed away from the professional ranks, right? But is, okay. And they're all Larry Brown, man. They're all. All of them except Dungy, who has family and religion, has managed to wander away. Hell, man. Hell's Gruden doing. They had the easiest job in the world, man. They put you in a trailer a couple times a a month, a year. They had you talk to quarterbacks. You said crazy things about banana plays on television. Boom. $7 million. I mean, some of those games were hard to watch. Oh, the Monday night games. Did Kobe get it right? No, I mean, 60 it, points in a meaningless game in which he didn't pass. I mean, <laughs> Don Libertard. Give us as much as you can here. Take us up to the dramatic first pitch, Billy. Jose Ureña standing at the back of the mound. He reaches down. He's rubbing some dirt and rosin on his hand. And here we go. Stugatz. And the pitch. Oh, God, a home run on the first pitch of the game. Oh, my God. Welcome, Derek Jeter. And that concludes our Marlins coverage for the season. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Nobody likes these. I like them. It's the most polarizing thing we do. I like death metal hockey guy. I cannot believe people like this guy. No, people do like him. And so people unfunny. Him. It's not unfunny. It's unfunny. It's a great character. Death metal hockey analysis guy is great. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN Radio is presented. Yeah. <laughs> you feeling this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. yeah. Feeling yeah. now. <laughs> Get in the character. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. <laughs> Guests on the Telebitar Show appear via the show Pantor Performance Line. And now, yeah. your sports are update. Yeah. Stanley Cup playoffs. Of course, the best. <laughs> the Capitals beat the Blue Jackets in double overtime. They are now down 2-1 to one in the series. The Jets beat the Wild 3-1. to one. In that series, reading a little too fast. <laughs> That's okay. I, mean, I, I like, only know one speed. I feel like you should only be talking about hockey, though. We're giving you too much to read. You should just be giving us bursts of yes, hockey yes. analysis. There are a lot of words. <laughs> and the Golden Knights, that's our team. Yes. They swept the Kings. Yes. Four games tonight. Yes. All game fours. Yes. Penguins and Flyers. Lightning and Devils, my favorite. <laughs> Preds and Avalanche. Our Bryles' favorite as well. <laughs> I'll say hi to him when I get there. God, I can't wait. I mean, Satan, I can't wait. And Ducks and Sharks. I love this music. 
but this is grading. And I'm going to stop now <laughs> okay. and get taken over to finish out the rest of the update by someone else. Wait a minute. I hold don't... on, hold on, someone else. Someone else. Come, save me. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's the greatest band in the world, dude. 311. Toes in the sand, chimmy in the hand, and 311 playing. That's the band. And finally, in their quest to take back the only copy of their album, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, dudes, the Wu-Tang Clan. They may have found an ally in former FBI director James Comey. Wu-Tang Clan's Ghost Mates Killer and Method Man met with Comey backstage at the Late Late Show last night. Ghostface captured the photo of the trio together by writing, Me and my brother Method Man working on getting that album back from the feds. I love 311, dude. Just let the vibes and the seal drum flow through you. Why'd you get so close to the microphone? This song was a little loud, and I'm also a producer on the show. <laughs> oh. Wu-Tang Clan forever. That album was forfeited by its owner, Martin Screlly, after he was convicted of security fraud. Never cool, dude. Currently, it rests in the hands of the Justice Department. Anywho, for all the latest headlines <laughs> right. and information, tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. By the way, I've heard these promos. There's a palm tree that talks like a surfer that oh. likes baseball. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Stealing my bit. Who would, who would like baseball, dudes? There isn't a surfer that would like baseball. It's a worst sport. There's a surfer baseball dude? There's a surfer palm tree that likes baseball dude. Where? where? No, no, wait. Where? Where? I'm talking about Cody Bellinger's sweet swing. Where? But where? On this very network, dude. Okay, where? Find find those for me. Go get Mike. We have it. We have it. Go get Mike. And no, have him no. play it off the J drive. Yes. I'm just going to stay here vibing to 311. Wait a minute. So people are selling some surfer baseball guy? It's a, it's a yeah. Baseball it's palm, palm tree? tree They're using the palm tree to yeah. promote baseball. All right. So how, how are they doing that? With the palm tree. Who's doing it? What's happening? What is happening here is that the surfer guy who stands far away from the microphone and death metal hockey guy who seems to be a little more insecure than usual lately, both of them were doing the update and death metal guy uh, became insecure and surfer guy told me there was some baseball surfer palm tree that ESPN was dragging around stealing his character and he has, you know, he's seeking copyright infringement. As a palm tree, I keep it pretty chill up here. But Cody Ballinger, brah, <laughs> he's exciting. Are you kidding me? So much gnarly power, so little effort. Just chillaxing up there. And we both have the tall, slender, wavy thing going on. <laughs> Cody Ballinger, totally, man. Sunday Night Baseball, Nationals Dodgers at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Telecast presented by Taco Bell. I mean, why would they steal the worst thing we do, dude? <laughs> I kind of like it. Yeah, it's oh, cool. really? There's what? another level there. He's a palm tree. Yeah. Why is he a move? surfing palm I could, tree? I could easily be a palm tree. No, you're too far away. He's a palm tree. I like it. But I'm further away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like everybody in that ad is high. Like, that doesn't sound like a palm tree surfer. It just sounds someone like someone's pretending to be high. No, that sounds like a palm tree surfer. Yeah, it definitely. Does. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. But I sound like a surfer, but I'm far away from the microphone. <laughs> but you're not a palm tree. Look, I could maybe it, it really worked because he said Cody Bellinger bra. Who I mean, who's whose advertising campaign is this? What are we selling? Doesn't even sound like a surfer, dude. We're selling baseball. Look, look, I can be a palm tree. Cody Bellinger bra. It doesn't even sound no, like a surfer. No, that's the turtle from Surfers Finding Nemo. Sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Cody Bre Bellinger, though. Yeah, yeah. Reps SoCal. Oh, yeah. All I wear is Pacific Sun. It's my favorite. Oh, Pac Sun is what they call it. Pac Sun. Pac -Sun. I go Pacific Sun. We're on formal terms. Don't know him that well. <laughs> All right. Quicksilver, cool with me, too, dude. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Gonna get some sex wax and slip on out of here. All right. Billabong. Again. I only like half of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the bill. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> uh, it's the Billy. I was doing the Billy. I'm sorry. Totally I was too. I ruined you it. Ruined I ru oh, two minutes in the penalty box oh for me. Oh my God! Did you ruin therapy the joke? Go to therapy, therapy, dude. I think it's Jeez, ready. Yeah. By the way, we'll find out. We'll find out. Mike, get on that. <laughs>
completely ruined the joke. I got an update here from Zach Lowe. Ooh. Oh, wow. What's happening? It's not good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Concern, guys. Hold on. I am uh, opening my phone up right now because uh, I've given my code away too many times on TV. This was 1120. Uh-oh. I offered him, you know, come on the show, feel terrible, you want to apologize, we're on your side, we're on Team Low, uh, Dan was a jerk, you know, he's going to yeah. publicly apologize and all mm-hmm. that good stuff, he wrote back. That was after, hey, 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 he wrote back, would love to, but running into a lunch meeting. Uh-oh. Eleven po- eleven twenty. First off, no one eats lunch till noon. No, no. Oh, Ask okay. him where he's eating lunch. Yeah. That's uh, the next move. You want verification of lunch? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see if he can think fast. Should I ask him to take a picture of himself eating lunch? Yeah. I'm picturing it at a Panera Bread. Hmm. You know we uh we don't have a penalty box anymore. Oh we don't. No, okay. we have a we have a therapy couch. That's where Dan is? Yeah, Dan's at the therapy couch right now. You can check in with him. He's talking to a therapist right, right now. Well let's check in. so comfortable here. It's nice. I don't know if you guys are talking to me or not. I can't hear anybody. Keep talking to the therapist, Dan. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Keep talking, Dan. Perhaps we should have tested this some more. Yeah. How are you feeling? Anything. How are you feeling, Dan? What emotions are you going through? Can you hear us, Dan? Oh, okay. Now I can hear you guys. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the a therapist. therapist. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm being left out. I feel like I'm being pushed aside, that the group is getting bigger than me and that they're getting better at it, and I have to wrestle in control, and so you guys are ahead of me on the jokes. And then when you make the billabong joke, he's going, I only like half of that. And then I go, and it's not the bill, and I ruin the joke. But I was going for the, he doesn't love Billy, because you guys were arguing. I thought that was clever. I thought I was adding to the joke. So it makes me sad that they would take away my shine like that after all I've done for them. Now is I need control too much. What's obvious is that I need too much control. i got to let go of some of the control. If I let go of some of the control, everybody will flourish. But if they flourish too much without me, then all of a sudden I get left behind. I'm old, and then they'll just be burying me at my funeral. How much of this do you blame on me? I mean, it's my greatest fear. Well, he's talking about the be more famous than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask the like therapist if this, if this bit is dying on the vine. Just bloated on it. Ask the therapist that, uh, um, is the bit dying on the vine? Oh, is anyone listening to me? Was I talking on air? Yeah, the whole time. No! Yeah. No! Don Libertard. Marriage at some point, I think for a lot of people, they get down to, and this is really a sad part about marriage, where you're just having sex one day a week. And that one day a week is Sunday. And so I love Sundays, but I hate everything I have to do leading up till Sunday, which is essentially agree with everything my wife says and does everything she asked me to do. And I'm only doing that for the Sundays. Because if I don't do it, there ain't no Sundays. And I can't live without my Sundays. Stugats. I wonder if Abby hates Sundays. Oh, she despises them. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. The NBA playoffs are on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight for a must win as LeBron and the Cavs host the Pacers. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Must win game. Here's your Sports Center update. Anthony Rizzo says there needs to be fewer regular season games saying, quote, we play too much baseball. Yes, you do. 100 games. That's it. Sprint. See you later. The second the NBA finals are over, the second they're over, next day, opening day. Do that until September. Have your postseason. Be done with baseball. It's too much. And no one cares. Boring. 
Bill Safety Micah Hyde says the solution to curbing the number of illegal hits on receivers is to find quarterbacks for dangerous throws. You like that? I do like that. I think Bro- I think Brock Osweiler should give all his money back. I meant the hundred game sprint in baseball. I didn't like that either. What one hundred and sixty two? I, oh, just you're ridiculously changing all the logistics of the sport without any thought. It's a or- summer sport. That's what it is. You know, baseball is baseball has become the sport. Uh, when we have no other sports going on that are more exciting, we pay attention to baseball. And so just have it on when there are no other sports going on. That's, that's all true. That's, that's true. It. But I feel like they do that pretty well in October. Yeah, a little too early. That's what, And that's what Rizzo was saying. And finally, in an end finally follow-up, the four baboons that collaborated to escape a Texas research facility reportedly rolled a 55-gallon barrel upright near a wall of their open-air enclosure, then climbed it, which allowed them to escape. Wow. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Forgive the self-involvement of what I'm about to say, but Mike Ryan hasn't been right for 20 minutes. He, he's been sent careening. His face looks wrong because evidently... We took a swing and a miss around here. We're going for, uh, we're trying to play a little bit on radio and television with some of the ridiculous resources they've given us here, which is basically a green screen that ESPN uses for around the horn, highly questionable, and a therapist couch and a hockey arena. It's a green screen. Mm -hmm. Height of entertainment. Company made $20 billion the last six years. It's a green screen. And the, uh, the therapy couch is actually just a cot that right. we borrowed the, from the from, hotel. From the Clevelander. Yeah. I saw that wheeled in here by uh, security the other day. The, you, I saw that you guys woke the sleepy security guard and had him drag a mattress in here as a therapist couch. It's very comfortable, by the way. It was an exciting day for him. Yeah. yeah he got to move. He got to protect someone. He, he got, got to, to earn his paycheck. He got to do something other than eat pizza, sleep, and watch bodybuilding videos. I think they only have four of those, and we have one, and we haven't given it back yet. I don't think that they knew this was going to be like a long-term loan. Oh, they, so oh they can get it back soon. We stole a bed. All right, so this is right. Mike doesn't like the bit. And I think the bit's got some potential. The idea of sending any one of us to the therapist couch to go and complain about whatever it is that's bothering uh, you on the job. Whatever, whatever. It's like an honesty bin. It, whatever it is that's bothering you psychologically. I like the idea of throwing someone out there. Uh, maybe we should throw Mike out there right now. Give it. Look at him. Please. Yeah, I'm at, Look at him. Uh, you're reeling though, Mike. I, we've lost Mike for the show. He doesn't yes. think he's funny anymore. Mike. Man, he was funny 45 minutes ago and then death metal hockey guy happened and then the couch happened and now he feels like he's not funny anymore. Mike, it feels good. Just let it out, man. It feels good. I really don't want to do Get this. Get out of here. Two minutes. Therapist couch. Go out. Out two minutes. Get on the couch. Go to the couch, and he doesn't want to do the bit. You're on record, okay? You're in that safe space where if the if, it's if on it, us, if, right. if it's bad not radio. funny, it's not your it's fault. It's on us. It's on us. I, I know it's bad radio. Don't hold back. Really explore yeah, your yeah, feelings. Exactly. Yes. Just vent, man. Just vent. Just let just, it out. Just, just vent. Just go to the therapist couch because I'm telling you that on television it's funny. It looks funny on television. I understand forty. 50,000 people are watching us on ESPN News, and many millions of you are listening to us on the radio. So television on the radio is terrible. But it's funny on television. Trust when I say how cheap and amateur we are at the height of entertainment is funny on television. I, we look like we don't know what we're doing. I could be wrong here, but based on those numbers that you just gave out, we're probably catering to the wrong audience. That's correct. That's correct. As we did in that bit, we catered to the wrong audience trying to do a bit for the 40 or 50,000 people watching on television instead of the millions. 53 million last month on podcast. <laughs> Two million a week on terrestrial radio. Millions. <laughs> We're going for a joke on AM radio <laughs> that involves a visual couch. And it didn't work, and we're stunned. What is that? And point? Disney's saying, why would we give you guys any money to go do more things? Why don't you borrow a couch from the hotel? So, at some point here, Mike is on the couch, and I just, I don't know what's happening. I don't know how to do this bit correctly. I think the bit's got potential. What do you think, Stugat? Do you think the bit has potential? Uh, no question the bit has potential. It's just, yeah, it's venting about things going on, uh, you know, around the show, venting about you, and giving people, yeah, you're letting people inside, letting them hear that. Yes, I think it's, uh, I think it's a good bit. I have no proof so far, but I do think no, it's a good. No, we don't bet. have any proof so far. So let's 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 listen in here on Mike and see right. what it is that he's talking about to the therapist. Let's listen. Hold on. Let's fade him up slowly because and let's see what. I was kind of against the idea of the segment, but conceptually, I guess visually it looked funny. But my concern was always radio, and all my worst fears were realized because it sounded clunky. 
Dan was lying down in a penalty box for some reason. They couldn't get the therapist's office up on the green screen, and Stu and I were just talking, trying to fill and communicate with, with Dan, but he couldn't hear us. I feel better. And I think my biggest fear, honestly, now that I have you here, is... All right, fade him down for a second. Okay. This is, seems invasive. Yes. This feels a little personal. We will check in at some other point during the segment. Again, Confidentiality got to, uh, agreement. Uh, yes, hold on, though. Just give him 30 seconds of must-win LeBron tonight. 30 seconds, and then we'll check back in with Mike. 30 seconds. Uh, it's, it's weird. A team down 0-1 in an NBA playoff series where, you know, I don't feel like it's a must-win. Most people would say, hey, must-win for the Cavs tonight. I don't think it's a must win. Now, I know I said that about an hour, hour, 20 minutes ago, but that was an hour ago. And now I don't feel like it's a must win for LeBron. I think even if the Pacers squeak one out here, even if the Pacers win by a point, maybe they win by 20 points, doesn't matter. Okay, it's all part of LeBron's master plan here. And so tonight, where most people are saying must win for the Cavs, I'm saying, nope, doesn't matter if they win this game. In fact, how about this? Must win game for the Pacers. It's a must-win game for the Indiana Pacers. You lose this game, series is over. You win this game, perhaps you have a chance where LeBron says to himself, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this owner. I'm done with this team. I'm done with this organization. You say the Pacers lose this game? Yeah, it's over. Their season's over? That's what you just said? Yeah, if the Pacers lose tonight, it goes to 1-1. Series over, season over, therefore making a must-win game. For Indiana and them boys. All right, hold on a second. Let's see. Let's check in. I, I like this. Even though it's rebellious and their confidentiality clauses, it's very invasive. We're probably breaking a lot of laws here. Let's listen in again surreptitiously to... How poorly the first one went, and then they dragged me right back out here against my will. And this is the dynamic. I've been telling you for years about this guy. He's always making me do these things. I don't think they're good. What does he want to do? Do it again and try to make it funny. And then, oh, let's just act. Well, this isn't acting. These are my true feelings. And I'm just so mad. And then Sugat's the filler busters, and it's clearly not working. No one's telling me if it's working or not. And I'm just here lying on a couch, truly exploring my feelings. I'm actually doing it now. I'm actually <laughs> telling my... It's not even going over the air, but I... I just, it's, you know, Here's, he's been really difficult lately. All right, hold on. Get that part out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Hold on a second. Oh, man, I love this idea. Here's the thing, okay? Mike Ryan, you, you guys think this is a bit, but this is the part of it that's not a bit. We never know if the technology is working around here. So when I was out there talking, I didn't know whether I was on the air or not on the air. And he legitimately doesn't know because of our lack of communication, because of how poorly we do things, because we're a marching band to nowhere. He, I just ran out while Stugatz was hot taking saying, keep going, Mike, keep going, because that's how we run things around here. Like it's everyone looking at each other and we don't have the technology to do anything right. I'm just telling him. We fusion. And they forced us out into this other studio. We were so happy just doing our normal radio show. And we wanted to be bigger. And you know what? Yeah, it, I, it was sort of my idea. I wanted to grow the show. And what happened was my life was ruined for two years. Just the worst. The worst person. You can cent. Five cent. Ten cent. And I'll tell you whose season is going to be ruined Owen tonight. That's Lance Stevenson. Uh, it's a must-win game. I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier. I'm upset with myself. I might need to go to the couch because LeBron, he's in my head. Everyone's confused. Must-win game for the Pacers. Take the Capital One Venture card. Put the Venture in Adventure. And once you get Capital One, we've been telling you this for a while, you will be helping the show. You will be helping one of our sponsors. You will be helping someone that we care about because they care about us. Tell us to, to God's about Capital One. Did the bit work? I didn't even uh, do this no idea. anymore with him. <laughs> oh, he's I went to Bristol and I asked around. I, I Believe me, I tried. But this guy has ruined my career to the point that I am radioactive. No one will hire me. And I am just here, stuck in this hell that's televised. God almighty, what have I done? <laughs> Don Lebatard. Stugatz lies so much, and he doesn't take inventory of his lies, that even when he's telling the truth, we don't believe him on anything. What's wrong, Stugatz? What are you objecting to? I mean, I listen... I've done this to myself, so I'm frustrated at myself. I'm not going to lash out elsewhere because I understand why everyone would think that uh, I was the one who did this. But I am sitting here telling you guys that I did not 
Do it. Stugatz. You absolutely took a bite out of a piece of pizza and put it back with the rest of the pizza. It was me. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. So... Joe Barksdale is going to join us in 15 minutes. He is an offensive lineman for the Los Angeles Chargers. He is an offensive tackle. He's a giant man. He is 6'5", 326 pounds. He does violence for a living. And he just released his debut album, Butterflies, Rainbows, and Moonbeams. The 6'5", 326 (laughs) pound... Tackle for the Los Angeles Chargers just released his debut album, Butterflies, Rainbows, and Moonbeams. It's actually Norwegian death metal. So I want to talk to this guy because he seems interesting for a number of different reasons. But one of the reasons that he's interesting is because DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Love have recently given voice to the idea of it's okay to be vulnerable publicly with my depression and my vulnerability right? in a world of testosterone. Uh, millennials, generationally, there's some differences here. People in their 20s, athletes in their 20s, seem to be okay with, hey, I don't have to be a man. I can talk about my feelings. It's okay to talk about my dark feelings. Different world, though, even from the NBA, right? Different yes. world for him. Yes. yes, okay, it is a different world, but he's 6'5", 326 pounds. I understand. And that. whether he's writing about butterflies, rainbows, or moonbeams, he's 6'5", 326 pounds, and he mauls people for a living. A lot of guys in that league do, is, is uh, my Yeah, point. but I, I don't think you should confuse, though. I, I don't think we should confuse that this man can't handle himself just because he's got a soft side. It's at the center of what it is that we're talking about that might not be accepted in that sport from him. No, I have no doubt that he can handle it. I'm wondering if the people around him can handle it. That's like how it's being received. Uh, He's being, you know? Yeah, I don't, uh, we will find out. We will talk to him in, in about 10 minutes, but he has decided. I don't know what the impetus for this was. I don't know exactly whether he wants to help others. That's what... DeRozan was saying it because he wanted to help others. Love did it because he wanted DeRozan to feel less alone. And this must be, I wonder what kind of silent screaming has been going on in sports for a long time with this stuff where guys are always just sort of told to rub a little dirt on it. In the case of Joe Barksdale, the voice in your head keeps telling you, kill yourself, kill yourself, do it now. And it keeps getting louder. Kill yourself. You should kill yourself. You're worthless. You should kill yourself. But I got money. I got fame. I got all my dreams have come true. I'm a big, big offensive lineman. I'm I'm making money. I've got millions of dollars I've made because I've gotten signed the bonuses and I'm successful at what I do. And now I'm going to talk about my feelings. I'm going to do it publicly. I don't know why exactly he's doing this, but I suspect we'll find out in about 10 minutes. Maybe it is to help others. Maybe it is because that silent screaming feels awfully alone when you're the only one who can hear it. I mean, it has to be, right? Like helping others, getting word out there, uh, letting other athletes know they're not alone, letting people know they're not alone. Well, I think there probably is with this. If he's coming out with this publicly, my guess is that there probably is with him, hey, don't judge a book by its cover. My guess is that if you're naming your album, you know, about butterflies and moonbeams, he very much doesn't want you to think of him or typecast him as 326-pound meathead. Because this stuff isn't easy to talk about publicly. I don't even know why he would do it. Like, for, I don't know what therapy he gets from it, from talking about it publicly. Oh, I think he has a platform. I think there's a lot of people, Dan, who have no idea what's going on inside of other people's brains, inside of their own brain, okay? Mental illness, depression, and he has a platform. He's coming on our show right now, and I think he is taking a leadership role and saying, hey, I'm going to spread the word about just how bad this can be for a lot of people because he has the platform and not many athletes, and, I, and I'm with you. I think there are more athletes. They're just afraid to say it. But we've had three who have recently come out, and I think the reason they're coming out is to help one another, but to help everyone else. I do. I uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson came out talking about depression the other day, and I'm wondering if we haven't had this. this it feels to me as an opening for talking about things that used to be not talked about. Are there more athletes in sports who have come out as gay? then there are athletes in sports who have come out as depressed. Because the reason I frame it that way is there is a vulnerability in revealing to others whatever your privacies are, whether they're mentally or 
sexually. And so I ask you the question, who's more outed right now, gay athletes or depressed, publicly depressed athletes? Actively, I think uh, mental illness yeah. has been more public. Recently, you feel like well, you have the, DeRozan, you have Love, you have Barksdale. Oh no, but I'm talking about throughout sports. I'm not just talking about in the major sports. I'm not talking about Michael yeah. Sam. I'm talking about throughout sports. The uh, the testo the what tend to be testosterone soaked worlds in the male kingdom. Yeah, I, I and I think it's a safer space, obviously, because we're seeing such a rash of it. And Lord knows, just statistically, there are more gay athletes than were than have publicly been outed. Um, oh, but I'm not. That's not the question I was asking you. I wasn't asking you, are there more closeted gay athletes than there are closeted depressed people? What I'm saying is the decision to go public with your sexuality is nobody's business. The decision to do that is something people do with great trepidation, no matter how much the stigma has fallen on those things, no matter how the country has changed its mind. Um, I look at everything that's happening here and I see that a guy like Joe Barksdale is deciding to be publicly vulnerable this way and i just don't think many people are willing to do that and the more guys who are six five three hundred twenty six pounds who do this the more guys who do it the more that you will find uh others are willing to do it we could just ask them yeah we could do that yeah. but what kind of way would that be to set up the interview <laughs> is zach lowe still mad at us oh man i mean listen i don't know what to do here dad mad at you okay he likes us okay because he's responding to me. I sent out a, uh, a hey, a hey, a hey, a hey, a fifth hey, and no response. And then Zach said at 1120 that he would love to come back on and would love for you to publicly apologize, but he's having lunch. And no one has lunch at 1120. Nobody. I don't care what anyone says. Nobody has lunch at 1120. So an hour ago, he sent you a text saying, lunch. I would love to do it. Got a lunch meeting. I have asked him for proof of lunch. Picture, receipt, anything. Oh, you think he's just avoiding me? Crickets. Don Lebertard. Woo, woo. <laughs> Stugats. <laughs> woo, woo. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. This right here is Joe Barksdale. This music right here is Joe Barksdale. I don't know if it's from Butterflies, Rainbows, and Moonbeams, but this is the 6'5", 326-pound Man who guards Philip Rivers for the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's really good. Here's your Sports Center update. FIFA Council member Constant Omari has been arrested for embezzling money given to the. I don't know how to say this one. Did I say it? Congolese? Congolese Soccer Federation. Thank you. I mean, what a shock. FIFA. Constant Omari embezzling money. Surprising. The Calgary Flames fired head coach Glenn Luzatin. No idea who he is. Never heard of him until today, and I'll never hear from him again. And finally, Lauren Hill has announced a tour to celebrate the 20th anniversary of her iconic full-length solo debut album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Hill will play the eight-time platinum-selling album at each stop of her 20-day tour. I like her, man. For all the latest headlines and information, tune to the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. You got a great voice, Roy. Joe Barksdale with us now again. He is a giant man, a mauler for the Chargers. He's being honored at the Erasing the Stigma Leadership Awards on April 26th. If you want more information, you go to erasingthestigma.org. And he has said in the past, this is a quote about being depressed. This is who I am. I am dis as depressed as I am black. Joe Barksdale with us now on ESPN Radio. Uh, Joe, thank you for making the time. Uh, we were talking about you before you came on. Why did you decide that there that there was a need somewhere within you to tell everybody um, about this? Um, I'm a uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm a big believer in research and education leading to answers and familiarity, and I feel like. You know, as human beings, we're afraid of what we don't understand. But, um, you know, at some point in time, I mean, throughout history, that's how the breakthroughs have been made. You know, someone has stepped up and said that, hey, we need to, you know, focus more on this issue or learn more about this issue. And then we, you know, continue. And I mean, then we as a society begin to cure it. And it's not as 
foreign anymore, like Magic Johnson with HIV, for example. Joe, I'm interested in the overall reaction, but because of the nature of what you do for a living, what was the reaction of your teammates in your locker room when you announced this news? Teammates were cool about it. Um, I found it surprising that the number of people that either could directly identify with, you know, what I, um, you know, things that they read in the article or were, you know, one or two people removed from it. So I think that, um, you know, it affects more people than we know about. And I think that, you know, uh, by stepping out and, you know, speaking up, I think that it will help those people um, get the help that they need so that, um, you know, so that it is, so that the disease doesn't take their life. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the specifics of this again. Joe Barksdale with us. He's a Chargers offensive tackle. Uh, when did you realize that the darkness was something that was abnormal? Last year, last year in November. Um, that's the that's the you know time that it really you know hit me that was my fourth time trying to kill myself and i realized that uh like you said it's not normal um so how explain this if it's not too painful painful again joe barksdale is being honored at the erasing the stigma leadership awards on april 26 for more information please go to erasing the org. when you're making these attempts to kill yourself um what what's going on? Like, what are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking that you're worthless? Are you thinking that the solution to the pain that is in your head, the solution is to end your life? I think it's a combination of those things. I think it's um, a feeling of worthlessness, a feeling of hopelessness, uh, you know, that nothing's ever going to change. And with that comes, you know, frustration and anger. And, you know, even when you try to calm yourself down, you start to wonder if you even deserve to be here. Um, that kind of thing. So, is there uh, were there triggers though, Joe? Or are you just walking around with sort of a weight on you all the time? I know music has helped you some, and a lot of people say that a, a lot. There's a lot of creativity to be found in in depressed states. I would agree with that. Um, I was actually just looking at a uh, looking at my um, album on iTunes. I was going to buy it for myself today, and the top three songs that were originals were written in that depressed state or, you know, has something to do with that. Um, is your album, is, your, is Butterflies, Rainbows, and Moonbeams about that? No, no, not, no. The album's not about depression. I mean, there's elements. I would call it um, an ingredient in the album, but it's not the, you know, it's not the uh, main focus, if that makes sense. It, it, do you think um, at all, do you think at all, it would be a weird title for depression. I, I agree with you. Uh, butterflies, <laughs> rainbows, and moonbeams. Yes. Um, Did you buy the album, though? Like, yeah, you, yeah I, feel like, I feel like our listeners should help you out here, by the way. It, the album is now out. Uh, butterflies, rainbows, and moonbeams. And like we said, it's a good, it sounds good. Joe is being honored at the oh, Erasing. Thank you. You're welcome. At the Erasing the Stigma Leadership Awards on April 26th. Well, Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix must have been a model, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix is my uh, favorite guitar player of all time, followed by Dwayne Allman. And and so how how uh, how in the locker room when when you come back, Joe, and you're do, does anyone know that you're in this kind of pain? Like, how alone were you when you're trying to harm yourself? How alone were you? Oh, well, I was alone. I mean, I've but that's like I said, this is something that I've been dealing with literally my entire life. And I was actually talking to a friend about it the other day. And he was saying, you know, because you've been dealing with this for 20 plus years, you've subconsciously just become so good at hiding it. Like even on super bad days, people wouldn't be able to tell because you've been, you know, doing this for 20 something years. Um, and I mean, people in the locker room, I would say they were all surprised. Uh, and I know not everyone has read the article. I'm pretty sure everyone that has read or will read the article, you know, would be surprised at the suicide attempts alone. Um, but, you know, it's a reality. And uh, the goal is to uh, help people not get to the point that I'm at, if that makes sense. Well, yes, it does. And in the vein of that, and I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, so please push me off of anything. Oh, I'm yeah. always comfortable. All right. So when you're going through the, the, the suicide attempts, can you take us through the details of what's happening in your life? Are, is your family scared of you? Are the people who care about you scared of you? Like, what what is happening in your life at that point? Well, nobody knew about the first three. Uh, 
And I would say, I mean, the first time was like 10 or 11. You know, my parents, you know, I, was, um, I wasn't a kid that hit a growth spurt. I just grew at a steady rate. And, um, you know, I had parents that made me feel like an expense rather than, you know, a child. And, I mean, growing up, you know, my mom would always talk about how she wanted a girl. And obviously I'm not a girl. Um, so I, I think I grew up thinking that my parents really didn't want me, you know, feeling like a mistake that they would. Uh, you know, that they would pretty, you know, admit, admit to in public, if that makes sense. And then, you know, after, you know, getting over, oh, you know, we wanted a girl, but we don't have a girl. You know, this is our son. Stand up, show him how big you are. His clothes are so expensive. He's going to eat us out of house and home. So, I mean, you feel like a, a pet that, I don't, I mean, I don't, yeah, you feel like a pet that your parents didn't want. That's not good for the self-esteem, as you can imagine. And so how does one um, go about shaking that off, right? Like, I mean, no millions are going to fix that. No football success is going to fix that. Uh, I would say therapy, um, antidepressants, um, music, and yoga, and meditation. Therapy, antidepressants, music. Yeah, those five things have, I think, you know, really helped, as well as uh, helping others. Community service is something that I'm really big on. I don't really publicize any of the community service I do because I'm not doing it for publicity, but um, one of the few times that I am happy is, you know, when I'm helping other people. So do you, but it's also, okay, so when you say music, you're talking about momentary bursts of happiness. So what you're talking about here is the music is like medicine. Giving is like medicine. These things... These things are like medicine, but the depression, it doesn't really cure the depression. It just pushes it off for a while. Yeah, um, I think the short-term goal for me, because I don't know, you know, I don't know where I'll be mentally 20 years from now, but the short-term goal for me is to, you know, first be able to manage it um, externally, and I feel like that'll lead to me, um, you know, doing a better job of uh, managing it internally. Uh, we did the serious stuff. Joe is being honored at the Erasing the Stigma Leadership Awards on April 26th. For more information, please go to erasingthestigma.org. If you want to support his cause and his, uh, his really, I mean, his bravery in coming out and talking about some of these things and showing you his soft side, Butterflies, Rainbows, and boom be- Moonbeams is the name of his album. But before we let you go, though, Joe, I need a football story about Philip Rivers yelling at you or something with something that could lighten this up around here. Philip Rivers, the, the angriest he's ever been with you, or the one time you told Philip, he grabbed him by the esophagus and said, hey, th- you know, stop screaming at me. You're always screaming at everybody. <laughs> um, that was a good Philip Rivers story. I think the funniest Philip Rivers story that I've heard, I wasn't on the team at the time, but apparently there was a uh, play that an offensive line coach installed. It was a run play, and I think they ran it like 20 times that week, you know, leading up to the game, which is a lot. And uh, the play just wasn't working, and I think they were either getting negative yards on the play or, you know, getting stopped at the line of scrimmage. And they said Phil just came to the sideline, ripped his helmet off, went over to the all-line coach and was like, you know, it's out. I'm not calling it again. You know, like just screaming in front of the, you know, entire team. This play is terrible. You know, I don't know why you continue to call it, but it's out. Like, I'm not I'm not calling this play anymore. <laughs> That's and then apparently the next week it, it broke for an 80-yard touchdown <laughs> against the Ravens. <laughs> it's great. I'm wondering if Joe has noticed like the rest of us. If he ever looks at Phillip 90 yards away from the end zone, down eight, yeah. no timeouts, 30 seconds left. Well, I mean, Joe's part of the reason, though. No, he's not know. part No, don't blame no, it on him. I'm just saying he might feel like that's an insult. No, no. But, Joe, you guys see him like you're playing the same Joe, game every Joe, week. Joe, Philip Rivers' entire career, he's down like one possession, eight points, uh, <laughs> 90 yards, uh, you, no timeout. Length of the field. Hey, we're trying to change that this year. <laughs> All right, this is the hey, year. I mean, He's been I, trying I, to I change it for a decade. Okay, but you've end. noticed it is what we're saying. You yeah. two have noticed that yeah. it's always that way at the end. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joe, but they, I, I do. Go ahead. Go I ahead. do I'm think sorry. that those kind of moments build, you know, they build the character, not just of Phil, obviously, but of the guys around him and the team as a whole. I think that, you know, when you've been in those type of situations and you can come out on top, yeah. Um, you well, believe then, you can do anything. Yeah, well, then Phillips certainly has more character than anyone. Joe, it'd be nice. Once, I mean, seriously, just one time, maybe a 31-10 to 10 lead in the fourth quarter. 
<laughs> we're looking forward to that this season, man. That's, that's the goal. Will you quit badgering this guy? Are you, I mean, he will, he will beat you to death with a guitar. Like, what's the matter with you? I feel badly for him. No, you don't. All right, Philip. It's partly your fault, you said to him. Joe, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate Part it. Part of the team. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> All right, Jeff. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPN.